So I've had people ask me over the years about Teresa Caputo, the Long Island medium. I'm sure anybody watching this channel knows who the Long Island medium is. And I haven't really spent a lot of time um, investigating her necessarily because she's been investigated so many darn times that uh, <laughs> we kind of know how it all works and what she's doing and so on. And um, so my boyfriend is Mark Edward. He's a, a, a famous mentalist, a psychic investigator, wrote the book, Psychic Blues, Confessions of a Conflicted Medium. And he had been um, investigating Teresa Caputo. In 2012, he was hired for Inside Edition to go and spend four days in New York City in the, to see Teresa Caputo and find out what was going on and do a show on it. And so, you know, she's never really been all that interesting to me. It, it, it's a TV show. It, it's a scripted TV show. So, I mean, there's not much more you need to know, but, you know, I get the questions from time to time. So let me do this, this uh, little video for you, because that's what this channel is all about, is learning the methods of the psychics and learning how it is that they, that it seems like they're doing readings and that they're connecting with the dead. So I guess I need to explain Teresa Caputo as well as I can in this little short format I'm going to do. So Teresa Caputo is a combination of a hot reader and a cold reader. And you don't see, I'm trying to think of some others that do this. I think a lot of psychics, psychic mediums will, are, you know, that are more of the old school, like the John Edward and um, James Von Prague and Chip Coffey and Sylvia Brown, those were traditional um, cold readers that used the the law of large numbers, you know, a large group of people throw enough stuff out there, somebody's going to raise their hand, it's going to hit. And if it starts to not hit, they move to the person behind them, the person beside them, the person over on the other side of the room, whatever they need to do. Oh, they just left. Sorry, no wonder I couldn't get that information that kind of thing. So that's more of the old school cold reading tactics, but all of them I think are happy to use a hot read when it presents itself and they don't think they're going to get caught. And, you know, we see this from time to time. There are people who just get by on hot reading and that's like Thomas John who does all his, almost everything I've ever seen him do is a hot read. And except whenever he's forced to not be able to do it, like somebody's calling in on a radio show or something like that, he can't get the information on him ahead of time. So Teresa Caputo is a little combination of both. And I'm going to explain a little bit about the differences to you. Um, one thing, let, let me think how best to explain this to you. So, so Mark Edward went to Inside Edition, you know, they flew him to New York City and they did, was he was there for four days. And what he was able to do is they were, he wore this, uh, Mark wore a picture of his son on his shirt, you know, to say like, I want to be in touch with my son and the son was alive. And he, um, and that was kind of the thing. So they went to observe, they didn't have anything really in place. This is, this is 2012 before I really got involved in putting on stings in this kind of thing. So um, what they did is they went and they showed up and they observed and they were, in, they got the VIP ticket. So they're right in the front of the audience, right, right, right there. And um, they did a lot of observing. Now they weren't able to film. And this is a problem because there's so many issues with, um, you know, Filming. I mean, uh, Inside Edition couldn't get in there and do any kind of filming, or if they did, they wouldn't have been able to show it. So this is a little more relying on on Mark, um, the things he said right afterwards. I and mean, he wrote an article for um, a blog that he was doing at the time. It's called Skeptic Blog. Let me get a hold of it for you really quick. And I'll put a link to this in the uh, description underneath this video. This is Skeptic Blog. You know, it's a it doesn't exist anymore. 
But this is a picture of Mark Edward and Teresa Caputo. Yeah, great, great photo. <laughs> a little blurry. And he wrote it November 9th, 2012. And I'll sum it up here really quick to you. Oh, you can see the picture of Mark's son right here on his on his shirt. And when he got up into the VIP part where he was able to meet with Teresa, she looked at the picture and she says, oh, he was such an old soul. And he's like, yeah, I know. And his son wasn't dead. So <laughs> why he said that? I don't know. Anyway, so he goes out there and some of the things that he observed, he's got written down here. He's one woman that Teresa asked, she asked this one woman, she says, why am I picking up baby clothes? And the woman replied, oh, that's weird. I just put a whole bunch of pictures of baby clothes on my Facebook page. No. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And uh, one of the things Marcus is talking about is when you're using Ticketmaster, Ticketmaster allows you to be able to get the information of who's in the audience, who are the people in the audience, who who bought the seat, you know, whose name is on the seat. And when you've got a huge room like Teresa Caputo has, you just need like 10 people, 15 people or something like that to, and go and troll their Facebook pages and, and you have some information. And again, you really only need probably three pieces of information about whoever it is you're looking at. What else here? Oh, this is really an interesting observation that Mark and Mark is talking about. And I think this is fantastic. Um, and I'll, I'll put this, like I said, this link in the description so that you can look at it and, you know, read it on your own. But what he says, okay, now this is a huge room, right? Oh, I was going to show you this. Let me show you this picture so you can see how big this room is. Because it is really big. So you can see this is a really big location. Now, this is a screenshot of one of Teresa Caputo's shows. All this blue that you can see here, these little blue dots, are where you can still buy a ticket. You know, those are the seats that are still available. And as you look at this, this is a huge venue. She really can, she can really pull in people. So um, <laughs> here's the front, the stage, and so on. Now, you notice this, this screenshot we took, what it says on here, is that it says that like you, you're to buy your ticket, you bought your ticket, now connect to Facebook to confirm your tag and see where you and your friends are sitting. You know, connect to Facebook, tag, you're it. And in other words, what happens is you buy your ticket and it's saying, hey, I'm going to be attending this event. And it tags the um, Teresa Caputo event on whatever day it is. And it's like saying, hey, here's my Facebook page. Can you please look at my Facebook page and troll through it and pick out some good information that you can relay back to me as if it, you were communicating with the dead? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm innocently just giving you this information for you to find. And, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know how many people are in this room, but maybe, um, you know, they only need 10, 15, 20 people out of that whole room of who, who've done this, where it connects to your Facebook page and then the the crew can go, not the crew, but the uh, Teresa Caputo or her associates could come in and they can look at the different um, Facebook pages and look and see what's interesting. And they'll know where they're sitting because it tells where this they're sitting. Ticketmaster will give the information to whoever it is who's um, running the venue, whoever's the event it is. They'll give them information like, who it is who's buying the ticket, their name, where they're sitting, that kind of thing. So, I mean, it's right there for people to be able to do so they can see that kind of information right there. Then what happens is, now, if you haven't already seen the video I did on Thomas John, um, April 2nd, it's called Don't Change Your Seats. Thomas John, the seatbelt psychic, don't change your seats. It's, it's, all, it's very similar to what I'm talking about right now, where... Um, Ticketmaster allows you to be able to see where the seat, seats are, and then it connects to Facebook and so on. And you could, you know, it's pretty obvious you'll know where they are. So um, what Mark noticed when he went to this event, and of course they can't film in there. He's in there with Inside Edition. And right here in the front, you can, this is where he's sitting, right up in the front. They have VIP tickets. And so what Mark would see is, that there would be a camera crew 
you know, a couple of different camera crews. There'd be, they have, you know, big cameras on wheels and they wheel them around. And then they have these things called a boon, which is a long uh, stick thing with, it looks like a honeycomb underneath it. And it goes over the top of the audience and it's somebody's holding it up there. And what it does is it allows you to get, you know, better volume. And, you know, there's lighting and stuff like that. So what will happen is there's two crews at least. And Teresa's on one side doing her, her reading to somebody over on the other side of the room. And then what Mark would see is that they would go to another section of the room. You see how big this room is. And they get it all set up with the cameras, the boon, the lighting, and they'd have it all ready. And then when Teresa was finished with her reading on the other side of the room, she would say, oh, I'm getting something over here. And she'd scuttle over to the other side of the room. She'd say, oh, I'm getting a firefighter. And this happened. And there's really, you know, and then the cameras are right there. They're on the lighting, the, the sound, everything's there. And while that's happening, or she's doing that reading, then the camera crew that was at the first place, they would go to another area of the of the event, they'd come over to the back and they'd get all set up with the audio and the and the cameras and so on, and that's how they just repeat it throughout the throughout the event, so that they'd be able to, um, they'd be ready for for each, um, you know, they'd be ready for whenever she got her inspiration or her draw or whatever it is that she says she does. And so when they when they're pulling them around like that, it's showing that the psychics are really the camera people in the right. I mean, they're the ones who are actually getting to the place before Sh Teresa does. So what does that tell you? Either you know the camera crew really is are the psychics there, or Teresa knows where she's going to go, and it's already been played out. Everybody knows where we're going to be. Okay, so section um, H two. Um, is the and then it's going to be followed by J, you know, section J, and then it's going to go over to the, you know, they, they know where they're going to be going. It's not like, um, I mean, when you're sitting there and you're watching and you and you realize what's going on, then it's obvious. Okay, Inside Edition couldn't film this, obviously, but it's obvious. But most people don't look for it. And, you know, that's what this channel is all about, right? Is understanding the tricks of the trade. What are the things that are going on behind the scenes or right in front of your faces, but you don't really notice it because it's, I mean, it's a very an emotional thing and, and there's a lot going on. So, you, so there's nothing wrong with you not realizing this happening, but, um, you know, keep, keep that in mind whenever you're looking at a TV show and you're seeing one of these people in a big area like that, and you've got cameras, people going here and people going there. And it's, it's like, but you know, there's cameras. Why, why is it that um, I'm not paying attention to there's multiple cameras here and they're acting like there's no cameras there. Doesn't that mean that this is either pre-rehearsed or it's all scripted or, you know, they know where they're going to go. It's not like, um, you know, they haven't planned this out yet. And that's where I'm going to go to next with what I want to show you. Hold on. So I want to show you some screenshots from um, a show she did. It's on her channel. And I don't want to have to worry about my, my um, getting, having issues with um, showing video because it really doesn't matter what's happening because what I want to do is show you this is this is typical of Teresa Caputo. She's out doing her thing. She's getting her nails done. She's at the grocery store. She's um, having work done in her car. She's at a, a jail. She's uh, giving readings to whomever, right? It's supposed to look impromptu because this is a TV show. And I guess cameras are always fo following her around. So this is her and her husband uh, going down the street you know, just happened to be walking to get her hair done is what she's going to do. So they're walking along and you forget, you know, you're the viewer, but because I think this is my opinion, I think because the, that we're so used to seeing things on TV, we forget that this is, that there's a camera crew there with sound with, um, and you don't see them with like wearing anything on their um, 
shirts or something. That's because it's again, it's got like one of those boons overhead and they're and they're recording everything because the sound is perfect and the lighting is just right. And there's a camera crew. And, and as you watch these shows, there's probably more than one camera that's following them, following them, you know, in front of them, behind them, to the side of them. And, you know, maybe they walk up and down the street multiple times to get the get the picture just right, the video just right. So here they're walking along and she's talking to him and he's talking to her and they're going to get their hair done. And she's going to go to this appointment that she has to get her hair done. Now it is an appointment. So that's not unusual, right? To get your hair done. So here she comes in. And this guy's going to do her hair and it's, and there's multiple camera angles. There's camera angles from the back. There's camera angles from the side. There's lots of camera angles. So these people are in this room. Now, what I really want to make sure you understand, and it's something again, that we are not conditioned to think about is that these cameras there's a bunch of people. There's probably an extra six people, eight people you don't even see because they're off camera, but they're with her. It's a it's a group. They don't wander in and say, hey, do you mind if we film? No, it doesn't do that. This has been prearranged. Not only is the location been picked out ahead of time, but they have to get permission from every single one of these people. See these men in the background here? They're on camera. You can see their faces. You don't know what might happen if you know you're going to see a lot of their faces. They're not blurred out. They have to have permission from those men to be on camera. The man who's doing her her hair, he's got a speaking role. He's he's talking. He has to have. They have to have permission from him. And of course, they got to make sure that they're not wearing anything with logos or or um, anything like that, because you don't want to have to be blurring out the logos because if you can't have like a, a a baseball hat with a New York Giants on it. Well, you know, you'd have to get permission, I guess. I don't know. It's licensing. It's it's uh, so you can usually tell that it's been prearranged because people are all careful about what they're wearing and what they're how they look. So this is not an impromptu, hey, I'm on a TV show. It's a reality show following Teresa Caputo and her husband around about mediumship. It's not, it's not exactly that. They have to go, they have to get permission from the salon to be able to do this. They probably close the salon for the day and, and bring in people um, to be the, the, you know, get, sitting in the chairs uh, I'm sure these are the people who work there. You know, these are probably really the hair, hair um, stylists and all that. Um, and maybe they're their real customers. I don't know. But they have permission from them before the cameras are turned on. That's what I'm trying to make sure you understand. Let's look a little bit further here. Again, here we are. So there's another stylist back here. And then there's another woman here. You can see her her start to see her profile in the picture and probably people outside too they have to have their permission before they walk in that door we can't have people just walking in who could just be on film accidentally and there's no permission so everything here is per, has a permission and, and let me show you one thing so she's oh here's a woman and another stylist and here's another woman who's caught on the camera and you can see her full face now i know darn well she's had to sign a permission form before the camera turned on her to get her um her signature on paper saying it's okay to film her they just can't randomly show up in a sh in some place and then the, Teresa, as she's sitting there, she turns around to this woman and says, hi, I'm a medium. That means I talk to the dead. And I just have to ask you, who's the woman in your life who showed up and is trying to get a hold of me? And the woman goes, just like bland. Oh, that's my mother. And then Teresa goes on and talks to her mother and tells her all this story and so on. And then after it's all over, she's afterwards being filmed. Oh, that was the greatest thing in the world. She got my mother. Oh, it was so amazing. I just happened to be wearing my makeup and my hair. Is, I just got it done and I don't have any logos on my shirts and anything like that. It just so happened I was at the salon that day. And that's how they marketed it is as if they 
just happened to walk in and and she's getting her hair done and dead people are talking to her from across the you know in the seat next to her and Teresa's got to talk to the dead person and just happened to be exact and, and it was so perfect and and like and this happens every time she goes to get her oil changed she goes to the grocery store she's going to go get a coffee at the store the cameras just happen to be following her she just happens to walk into a building and nobody looks at her and says get the heck out of here you do not have my permission to film in here get out no you never see me that and whenever she says to people oh i'm a medium i hope you don't mind i give you a reading they're like oh yeah sure go ahead and give me a reading and they say, oh, there's an older person around. Oh, yeah, it must be my dad. Oh, he's, yeah. They're prepared. They know they're going to be on the show. They know that they, they've they already filled out paperwork to be on the show. They've already f filled out paperwork. I don't think they're actors. So don't get me wrong. I really don't think they're actors because it's so much easier to just take people and and look up their information, which is called hot reading. You have their name, you have their address, you have all sorts of information because they have to fill out the paperwork before they can be on, on camera. Some people ask to be on camera or maybe they won something because they're a fan of hers or maybe it's somebody's friend. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they find these people. There's lots of ways of finding their pe the people who are going to be on camera. But to think that these are unwilling, unsuspecting, just rando people who happen to be running by or walking by, and they just happen to have their makeup done, and they just happen to have their nails done, and they just happen to not be wearing clothes with logos or anything on them, and that they just happen to be talking to the dead you know all of a sudden once they get a reading and you're receptive to that and 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 no that's not how this is done and so in my channel here that i've been trying to explain to you all the different tricks and how these are done this is one method and this is a common method now that we have tv and you know TV shows and, and people are interested in other people's lives and how they, you know, what they do in their lives. And I think we just have lost sight of this. It's, it's not something that we're really thinking about because like I said, we're conditioned to not see the, uh, the cameras that are following the people around. Um, you know, it reminds me, I love murder mysteries. Okay, the old-fashioned kind, like the Agatha Christie murders. I love those kinds of things. And the Sherlock Holmes and the, you know, all murder she wrote, those kinds of things, you know, not a lot of blood, but a little thought process is going on in there. But, you know, uh, those murder mysteries. And over and over and over in these murder mysteries, they always, it seems like it's, it's always the person who's least likely to have been the person, right? The, the murderer is always this person who isn't the one uh, that you would have thought about, like the butler did it, right? Wait, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting to my point. And what happens is, is that, you know, when they interview suspects, okay, this is not real life, right? They interview suspects and they say, and they or they interview the neighbors and they say, did you see anything strange that happened or did you did you notice anything happening and, and so on? And they say, no, no stranger came to the house that day and no, nothing unusual happened. But what they forget to mention is like uh, the mail, the mailman came up or the butcher dropped off the, you know, dropped off the meat or the milkman came. Okay, these are old, right? You guys, these are really old. But like, you know, the delivery driver came by, but you don't even see the delivery driver because you're so conditioned to, to having the d delivery driver and seeing him every day. You don't even think about it anymore. So that's who the murderer was, you know, it was somebody who, who's invisible because, but even though they're so obviously there, that they're invisible to you. And that's what happens in these shows is you just don't even see them. It's, it's right in front of your eyes. The trick is so 
so perfectly done in front of your eyes and and some people some people they overdo it they think in their mind oh it must be really complicated oh my gosh there must be some like really a lot of elaborate things happening and it's just like magic is it's much more simple than you think the 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 trick is so simple and your brain is thinking of all the different ways it could be done and you're oh well you know there's hidden drawers and hidden this and oh maybe this and it's like maybe there's a private investigator hired to to follow these other people around no it's so much more simple than you would think and we're just not thinking that way anyway i was trying to think of what i wanted to do today to show you guys and and I came across a bunch of the Teresa Caputo all the screenshots of the stadium and stuff that we've I've had for, for years. And I said, oh, this would be an interesting thing to explain to you guys. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're liking this channel. If you do, please like, please share, please um, make comments. I'm happy to answer your, your um, questions, uh, but please give me a, a, a subscribe. I really would appreciate that and hit that little ding bell so that you know when i've uploaded another video um but if you have other uh things you want to show me even if you don't want me to do it on air and you want me to look at a reading that has been done for you um and you feel like it's really good evidence or you just can't quite figure out how you know what is going on in this recording that you have maybe it's 20 30 years old and you have it on a cassette tape if you can turn it into an mp3 or some kind of thing and let me listen to it i'll be happy to listen to it i don't have to ever show it to anybody else again i've done this for lots of people and it's it's um, really fascinating it's really really interesting the psychology of mediumship I, i'm just impressed all the time about how we how we make patterns, how we, how we, how we are, we're trying to hear what we want to hear. We, um, how memory is so faulty, it's fascinating. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, like I say, subscribe and um, hit that little bell and share this and leave me some comments. I'd appreciate it. Thanks, guys.